and Queen Latif lights the fuse to the other. Crump, brass, can, and yeah. And, it, well, a historical note, these are slow-burning fuses, so, you know. Um, double boom has not been fired uh, into the Yarkon Valley since the simultaneous double blast uh, to announce the funeral possession of uh, Shail Mook, uh, Sharif's great-grandfather, 1892. Sharif and Latif. Uh, blow their crops, boom, boom, <laughs> in a simultaneous cannonball orgasm. Well, for aesthetic contrast, Finks lights a gentle Roman candle and it, phew, wow, and furls colossal pyrotechnic petals of a Science version of Iris uh, all across the Chitrali night sky. Psychedelic spectacle to remember. Well, uh, more you know what passes by. Uh, Sharif loves to uh, escort his buffed out queen around the kingdom, like he, uh, he introduces his uh, reincarnated brother to the faux festival of the kafirs, an outrageous uh, bacchanalia. The kafirs are free. Uh, why? Because they're a non-Muslim tribe. None of those rules, huh? <laughs> Inhabiting three nearby valleys. Oh, the kafirs, huh? Oh, the landscape, renowned for their green valleys, uh, pristine crashing mountain rivers, and their forests of mulberry, sycamore, and uh, walnut trees. Who are the kafirs? Well, uh, they're, they're reverently referred to as the Well, uh, they're animus. They're animals. Pray to animals. Uh, pure nature. The kafirs glorify uh, ebex, mohair goats, uh, bear, snow leopards, um, and they expertly carve little miniature wooden idols of these animals because they believe in supernatural creatures. Fairies and uh, <laughs> evil spirits. Yeah, well, the kafirs they perform animal sacrifices, and they're renowned for strange, unique uh, rites like uh, this faux festival that King Sharif has brought his queen over to uh, check out. Well, the kafirs are descended from one particular. Greek general of Alexander the Great, who he didn't want to go home. He wanted to carve out a little kingdom for himself over here. Huh? Yeah. Uh, and he settled in northeast Afghanistan, which isn't that far from here, uh, just over, you know, one of those 40, 40 passes they all use. Uh, yeah. Oh. And uh, the Gafirs used to inhabit that uh, place in northwest of Kabul as the uh, Kafiristan, the land of the Kafirs, uh, proudly, uh, but <laughs> cultural genocide struck in 1895 when the Afghan king Abdul Rahman Khan ordered his army into Kafiristan to convert convert pervert of the the uh, nature worshiping kafiris into traditional islamic how do they do that by the sword <laughs> well uh, yeah yeah a few kafiris they just they just hightailed it out of there 
This went over the so-called you know, fantasy border between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Yeah, they, they moved right over the hill uh, near Chitral. Yeah. And uh, to avoid this brutal proselytism. <laughs> uh, and because of their rare isolated culture, uh, the Faux Festival evolved from the, um, the need of the village shaman to get as many Kafiri women pregnant as possible. They didn't want to fuck around with the Muslim people. They wanted to stay pure. So they only had three villages, so they all just did each other over and over again to stay what, pure, kind of. Um, yeah, and so, uh, yeah, decreasing population problem. So once a year, the Kafiri shaman would, uh, he named himself the Budalak, and um, he'd mate with as many Kafiri women as he could uh, maintain an erection for. Well, remember, I mean, this was a long time before Viagra, you know. So, the villagers soon realized that uh, while shamanin is, is, you know, so welcomed for healing powers, uh, supernatural wisdom, uh, but that uh, fucking stud service requires the uh, extra potent whew, testosterone from the bang bang is it of a teenager <laughs> so the honor of playing the fucking budalak once a year was passed from the shaman to the Isle shepherd in the whole mountain valley and this worked out real good. <laughs> yeah.